everyone. Welcome to the Full Court Press. I'm Alex Weevil alongside Rob Hughes. Midseason tournament still in full swing. We love it when you tweet us those scores. Helps us out, so don't forget to do that. At hashtag Full Court Press, we start off the night with the undefeated Highland Park Scots taking on Casey Washington. Ken Darting and Highland Park try to get to the title game of the Topeka Invitational. The Scots get in some foul trouble, but in the second quarter, it's Jamal Buckets McMurray knocking one down from distance. He's in range as soon as that young man steps into the building. A little later, it's McMurray doing the dishing this time as he finds Cameron Clark, pretty much the same spot, wide open on the wing. The Scots can shoot it all over the gym, but they have a get bit. Ah, they have a big guy inside. There's Shafi Carr, rhymes with coffee. He carves out some space underneath and make, makes it on the missed free throw. So two points bullying for Highland Park. Now they're in complete control, but they're not going to show any mercy. There's McMurray showing he's not just a shooter, taking that one to the rack. The floater in the lane is pure. An 18 0 run helps seal the deal for the Scots as Highland Park is going to the championship 54 35 over KC Washington. So who will the Scots meet? Either Lawrence or Olathe South. The Falcons start, start hot in the second half of this semifinal contest. Taylor Filbert, the three, as the Falcons hold Lawrence to just three points in the third quarter. How the Lions stop the bleeding in the fourth? Jake Mossman, the floater. That's the final bucket for Lawrence, and it's enough as Lawrence advances to the title game. Chesty Lions take this one 45-41 over Olathe South, and will meet the running Scots tomorrow night at 5-15. Staying in town, Topeka High trying to get back on the winning track against Wichita Southeast. Third quarter, Adam Thompson takes the baseline, a wise choice as he gets the shot to fall. Golden Buffaloes hit back though, working it around the horn to EJ Garns. He hits the triple, but later it's Thompson to Johnny Herrero. He strokes the triple in the corner there, one of the few bright spots for the Trojans. T-High falls 61-38. And in the first matchup of the afternoon from the Topeka Invitational, it's the host team, Topeka West, taking on Wichita East. The Chargers heat up from outside to start the contest. Most Hudges strokes it from the far side. That forces a timeout. Both teams combined for 48 points in the first quarter alone. Devon Manuel does the same for T-West on the far corner there. The assist from Hudges, 15 points to lead the Chargers, but and they could not slow down the Blue Aces one bit. Trayvon McGarity and Wichita East hit the century mark. Topeka West falls in this one 100 to 57. In the 40th annual Ralph Miller Classic, Shawnee Heights falls to Andover Central 63-43 or 63-49. Also, Emporia has little trouble with Leavenworth. Jackson Perez goes for 30 points on the night, 84-68. They move on to the championship game. Over at the January Jam Tourney and Valley Center, Seaman gets to serve up some revenge against Junction City, 63-53. The final both teams will play again tomorrow. All right, how about some girls' contests in the Centennial League? Washburn Rural Lady Blues hosting the Lady Trojans of Topeka High. First half, T. High works it inside to Jasmine Martindale for the deuce down low. More from the visiting team, Adriana Henderson steps back from long distance, and that one goes down. Third quarter, much of the same. T. High's Rihanna Maples knocks a three ball out of her own, and the shooting trend continues. Brittany Harden from the other corner for Topeka High, but Rural would stay right there to defend the home floor. Charlie McCalus answers the call, knocks it down. Then Paige Cunningham from the top of the key will make this one as well as Junior Blues make a big comeback in the final minutes. A nice jumper from her, and that's how it's going to go. Washburn Rural wins 44-41. At Seaman, the Lady Vikings in action hosting the Topeka West Chargers. Both teams in need of a league win. Early on, Mallory Searcy hits Kaylee Lambrecht for the wide open mid-ranger. A little later, Topeka West going to their bread and butter. Artura Campbell in the low post steps through for the left-handed lay-in, but Seaman having no problem scoring the basketball. This time, it's Tatiana Schaefer feeding Tatiana Leggett in the post. The beautiful pump fake and lay-in from Leggett. Seaman in full control. Campbell doing her best to keep the Lady Chargers in the game. Sneaks baseline around her man for the bucket, but the Lady Vikes too strong all night. Here's Rachel Field posting up the dominant Campbell and hitting a jumper right over her. Got the home court cooking as Seaman downs Topeka West 52-34 the final. Well, there's a game going on over the pressure cooker as High Park girls entertain Junction City. First quarter, Angelique Kyles takes the pass and makes it count. Lady Scott's down just a pair. JC comes right back though. Akia Fain 
takes the pass and goes strong to the rack, increasing the lead for the Blue Jays. Later more from JC, Keeley Reigns, and it rains down the three ball. It gets the umbrellas out there, I guess. That's Pierre from the corner. Lady Scots with the inbounds pass right there. Tiffany Smith, Elrod gets it over to her defender. And then Lady Jays come back with some nice passing of their own. Peyton Pender finds a bank open late tonight. More from JC. I think you can see a pattern forming. Brianna Waterman, the pass and score too much. Junction City in this one. They win by 20 on the road and a nice bounce. And there to go with it. 51 31 the final. Doganoxy Invitational play. The Holden Wildcats in the semifinals taking on the Lansing Lions this afternoon. Early on, Trent Tanking finds himself in a little trouble, goes cross court. Eventually, the ball finding Garrett Beecher for the triple. Next Wildcat possession, Holden getting it to the same corner. This time, it's Tyler Burdick wide open. Different guy, same result. Holden jumping out to a six point lead, but the Lions respond. It's Dante Gibson here going with a little crossover to get to the hoop. He lays it in with ease. Now Holden catching Lansing, sleeping, tanking to Burdick on the out of bounds play to Cameron Karn, avoids the high flying Lions on the lay in. But Lansing takes the one-point halftime lead and doesn't look back. Roy Clater with the steal, and he's off to the races. The pump fake, and look out below. Dunkmaster Flex, Sir Dunkalot, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Clater taking no prisoners. Lions hold Holton to 16 second-half points. The Wildcats fall 51-40. to Also in the semifinals in Tonganoxie are the Silver Lake girls taking on the DeSoto Lady Wildcats. Early on, Megan Bonar finds Teammate Taylor Saucerman cutting the basket for the lay-in. DeSoto building a comfortable lead, but a lot of fight left in the Lady Eagles as Jessica Johnson goes back door to Ashland Lane for two. A little later, it's a similar looking play. This time, Taylor White on the drive. It's the nice floater in the lane in Silver Lake. Down seven now with a couple minutes to go. White now finding senior star Mackenzie Freeman locked and loaded for the corner three ball, and they're within four. But DeSoto playing keep away the entire fourth quarter. Bonar takes advantage of the aggressive defense and takes it all by herself. All the way to the rack is Silver Lake Falls 43-33. Ten point difference, but it was a little bit closer than that. Well, that will wrap up the high school portion.